Hey, what's going on everyone? Eric Ross of the Guy with the Eye here, and I'm here to tell you six reasons to not buy the Canon 5D Mark IV, which just came out very recently at the time of this video. So the Canon 5D Mark IV was a very long wait for a lot of people on the Canon 5D Mark II and Mark III line. There are a lot of people thinking, oh, they're gonna blast us away with 4K video, there's gonna be amazing features built into this thing, maybe to really kind of help the uh, cinema line out there a little bit and get the video market really engaged in the DSLRs but they did not fully deliver on exactly as the hype wanted, and it's because they kind of you know, cannibalized and limited themselves, so that way you have to use a cinema market. But let's break down six reasons why. You may not want this. I think one of the biggest things and the biggest promises was the dual pixel raw technology built into this camera. Now, I don't know if a firmware can change this or if it's something entirely new that has to be built in, but the dual pixel raw was supposed to help you, you know, micro adjust focus and help you shift focus. For example, say if you accidentally miss focus and then, you know, you focus on the nose and the eye in the portrait was a little bit out, that you could go into a software and shift it so that way, I guess kind of in a focus stacking way, that it would adjust that and you could get the eye. And whoever figures that out would blow away the entire industry. But this fails because it really just doesn't change the sharpness much. And that's really all it does is you get a little bit of the micro G, uh, adjustments to the DPP, kind of DPP menu. It's just not good and it's not worth it whatsoever. Plus, you are doubling, I think it becomes a 42 or 46, whatever, megapixel file at the time. So. It, that's a bit of a letdown. I think another letdown would be the 4K video as well. You are getting a 1.74 times center crop, which a lot of the ones crop out there, Sony does a little bit as well, but you're also getting a motion JPEG, which is not the best, you know, uh, Kodak for this, so it's not that good uh, in that regard. So if you're looking for a really awesome 4K, you know, cinema camera or something like that, you're using maybe as a B camera, maybe A, all depending on what your shooting style is, the 5D Mark IV is not the best option for you. I would look elsewhere, possibly into the Panasonic or Sony line, especially their full frame line for that. I think the biggest weakness is that it's way too similar to the Canon 5D Mark III. I mean, yeah, you get a bump in pixels and uh, autofocusing speed, but it's pretty much the same body. You don't get much new, a couple new buttons, but it's not really justifying a new price tag, which I think is another big one that I didn't include, is that now you know, you're paying $3,500 for this, and the Canon 5D Mark III is about $2,400 right now. So keep that in mind. It's very similar kind of for the most part to the Mark III and, you're, and that's also a great stills camera. The Mark, III is just, the Mark IV is just a little bit faster. Another big one is just the massive file size that you're getting, especially if you're trying to use 4K video and the dual pixel raw. I mentioned that when I talked about the pixel raw, but you are you know, crippling what you could do as these massive sizes and hard to open, especially in the DP software. So keep that in mind when you're doing a lot of these things, you're getting massive file sizes that are pretty much not needed for the most part and to shoot normally. And I think one of the biggest outrages came with this next point and is that it is still using a compact flash and SD card system. They're using 4K, you would think that they would maybe use CFast or something, but they are still using more of the outdated technology. Now, if you're shooting stills, it's totally not a big deal in my opinion, but it, you know, if they're trying to push us a little bit as a video camera like they really are, CF and SD card system is a little bit outdated for that and I definitely think that that's causing rage for a lot of people that wanted to get a high 5D Mark IV that could do some video. One of the last things I think who shouldn't buy this camera is someone who wanted that video or cinema camera. They kind of kind of is forcing you to go up to that cinema line of camera, that one DC or C100, C300, C500, C700 instead of going down to the line. Now, obviously you can magic lantern them, but you know, that's obviously a risk at some, it's firmware and everything. So keep that in mind that you can maybe, that's gonna be something great with this camera. I don't know, but that could be an option for you. But if you're looking at this camera, you're like, oh, I'm gonna get something high end of the line. I don't think that would be a great choice for you. 1080p might be a good option, but they kind of mess up the frame rates as well with that. And 720p, you get uh, pretty much a baked in uh, slow motion. I think it's 120 frames per second. Please let me know down in the comments. Do you think that these are the only reasons you should not buy this? I also made a video earlier today and it came out the same time as this. So check the link down in the description below on maybe seven reasons why buying the Canon 5D Mark IV might be a good choice for you. Let me know. Thank you so much for watching this video. Eric Ross, the guy with the eye. As always, keep an eye out, subscribe, share, have fun. The Canon 5D Mark IV might not be for you, but you can snag a Mark III at an amazing price brand new.